Hello, it is um, April 9th. Happy birthday, Stacy! And a Thursday. Um, I think that means it's like day 33 that we have been pandemicking and day like 16 or 17, maybe 17 of continuous learning at school. Um, we are about a third of the way through book four and we last left off with Satan looking at Adam and Eve um, enjoying one another's company and looking happy and content and enjoying this like beautiful world that they had and feeling some feelings. In fact, was speechless with feelings. So I'm going to maybe back up a smidge, just a couple lines, and then get started at line 356 is where I'm going to start. And I'm going to go all the way through line 688. All right. Um, when Satan still in gaze, at first he stood, scarce thus at length, failed speech recovered, sad. O oh hell, what do mine eyes with grief behold? Into our room of bliss, thus high advanced, creatures of other mold, earthborn perhaps, not spirits, yet to heavenly spirits bright, little inferior, whom my thoughts pursue with wonder, and could love, so lively shines in them divine resemblance, and such grace the hand that formed them on their shape hath poured. Ah, gentle pair, ye little think how nigh your change approaches, when all these delights will vanish and deliver ye to woe. More woe, the more your taste is now of joy. Happy, but for so long, happy, but for so happy ill secured, long to continue. And this high seat, your heaven, ill-fenced, for heaven to keep out such a foe as now is entered. Yet no purposed foe to you whom I could pity, thus forlorn, though I unpitied. League with you I seek, and mutual amity so straight, so close, that I, might d that I with you must dwell, or you with me henceforth. My dwelling happily may not please like this fair paradise, your sense. Yet such accept your maker's work. He gave it me, which I as freely give. Hell shall unfold to entertain you to her wildest gates and send forth all her kings. There will be room, not like these narrow limits, to receive your numerous offspring. If no better place, thank him who puts me loath to this revenge on you who wrong me not or him who wronged. And should I at your harmless innocence melt as I do, yet public reason just, honor an empire with revenge enlarged by conquering this new world, compels me now to do what else, though damned, I should abhor. So spake the fiend, and with necessity the tyrant's plea excused his devilish deeds. Then from his lofty stand on that high tree, down he alights among the sportful herd of those four-footed kinds, himself now one, now other, as their shape served best his end, nearer to view his prey, and unespied to mark what of their state he more might learn by word or action marked. About them round a lion now he stalks with fiery glare, then is a tiger who by chance hast spied in some purlieu two gentle fawns at play, straight couches close, then rising, changes oft his couchant watch, as one who chose his ground, whence rushing he might surest seize them both, gripped in each paw, when Adam, first of men, to first of women Eve, thus moving speech, turned him all ear to hear new utterance flow. Sole partner and sole part of, these little, of all these joys, dearer thyself than all, Needs must the power that made us, and for us this ample world, be infinitely good, and of his good as liberal and free as infinite, that raised us from the dust and placed us here in all this happiness, who at his hand have nothing merited, nor can perform aught whereof he hath need. He who requires from us no other service than to keep this one, this easy charge, of all the trees in paradise that bear delicious fruit so various, 
not to taste that only tree of knowledge, planted by the tree of life. So near grows life to death, whate'er death is. Some dreadful thing, no doubt. For well thou knowest, God hath pronounced it death to taste that tree, the only sign of our obedience left among so many signs of power and rule conferred upon us, and dominion given over all other creatures that possess earth, air, and sea. Then let us not think hard, one easy prohibition, who enjoy free leave so large to all things else, and choice unlimited of manifold delights. But let us ever praise him and extol his bounty, following our delightful task to prune these growing plants and tend these flowers, which it were it toilsome, yet with thee were sweet. To whom thus Eve replied, O thou for whom and from whom I was formed flesh of thy flesh, and without whom am to no end, my guide and head, what thou hast said is just and right, for we to him indeed all praises owe, and daily thanks. I chiefly who enjoy so far the happier lot, enjoying thee preeminent by so many odds, while thou, like consort to thyself, canst nowhere find. That day I oft remember, when from sleep first awaked and found myself reposed under a shade on flowers, much wondering where and what I was, whence thither brought, and how. Not distant, far from thence, a murmuring sound of waters issued from a cave and spread into a liquid plain, then stood unmoved, pure as the expanse of heaven. I thither went with unexperienced thought and laid me down on the green bank to look into the clear smooth lake that to me seemed another sky. As I bent down to look just opposite, a shape within the watery gleam appeared, bending to look on me. I started back, it started back, but pleased I soon returned these it returned as soon with answering looks of sympathy and love. There I had fixed mine eyes till now, and pined with vain desire, had not a voice thus warned me. But thou seest, what there thou seest, fair creature, is thyself. With thee it came and goes, but follow me and I will bring thee where no shadow stays thy coming, and thy soft embraces. He whose image thou art, him thou shalt enjoy inseparably thine. To him shalt bear multitudes like thyself, and thence be called mother of human race. What could I do but follow straight, invisibly thus led? Till I espied thee, fair indeed and tall, under a plantain, yet methought less fair, less winning soft, less amiably mild than that smooth watery image. Back I turned, Thou following, Christ aloud, return, fair Eve, whom fliest thou? Whom thou fliest, of him thou art, his flesh, his bone. To give thee being, I lent out of my side to thee, nearest my heart, substantial life. To have thee by my side henceforth, an individual solace dear. Part of my soul, I seek thee, and thee claim my other half. With that, thy gentle hand sees mine. I yielded. And from that time, see how beauty is excelled by manly grace and wisdom, which alone is truly fair. So spake our general mother, and with eyes of conjugal attraction unreproved and meek surrender, half embracing leaned on our first father, half her swelling breast naked met his under the flowing gold of her loose tresses hid. He in delight, both of her beauty and submissive charms, smiled with superior love as Jupiter on Juno smiles, when he imprains the clouds that shed May flowers, and pressed her matron lip with kisses pure. Aside, the devil turned for envy, yet with jealous leer malign eyed them askance, and to himself thus plained. Sight hateful, sight tormenting, thus these two, imparadised in one another's arms, the happier Eden, shall enjoy their fill of bliss on bliss, while I to hell am thrust, where neither joy nor love, but fierce desire, among our other torments not the least, still unfulfilled with pain of longing, finds. Yet let me not forget what I have gained, 
from their own mouths. All is not there, it seems. Theirs, it seems. One fatal tree there stands of knowledge called, forbidden them to taste. Knowledge forbidden? Suspicious, reasonless. Why should their Lord envy them that? Can it be sin to know? Can it be death? And do they only stand by ignorance? Is that their happy state, the proof of their obedience and their faith? O oh, fair foundation, laid whereon to build their ruin. Hence I will excite their minds with more desire to know and to reject envious commands invented with design to keep them low whom knowledge might exalt equal with gods. Aspiring to be such, they taste and die. What likelier can ensue? But first with narrow search, I must walk round this garden and no corner leave unspied. A chance but chance might lead where I may meet some wandering spirit of heaven by fountain side or in thicket shade retired, thick shade retired from him to draw what further would be learnt. Live while ye may, ye happy pair, yet happy pair. Enjoy till I return, short pleasures or long woes are to succeed. So saying, his proud step he scornful turned, but with sigh circumspection, and began through wood, though through waste, or hill or dale his roam. Meanwhile, in utmost longitude, where heaven with earth and ocean meets, the setting sun slowly descended, and with right aspect against the eastern gate of paradise, leveled his evening rays. It was a, it was a rock of alabaster, piled up to the clouds, conspicuous far, winding with one ascent accessible from earth, one entrance high. The rest was craggy cliff that overhung still as it rose, impossible to climb. Betwixt these rocky pillars, Gabriel sat, chief of the, the angelic guards, awaiting night. About him exercised heroic games the unarmed youth of heaven, but nigh at hand, celestial armory, shields, helms, and spears hung high with diamond flaming and with gold. Thither came Uriel, gliding through the even on a sunbeam, swift as a shooting star in autumn thwarts the night, when vapors fired impress the air and shows the mariner from what point of his compass to beware impe impetuous winds. He thus begins in haste. Gabriel, to thee thy course by lot hath, hath given charge and strict watch to, that to this happy place no evil thing approach or enter in. This day at height of noon came to my sphere a spirit zealous as he seemed to know more of the Almighty's works and chiefly man, God's latest image. I described his way, bent all on speed, and marked his airy gate. But in the mount that lies from Eden north, where he first lighted, soon discerned his looks alien from heaven, with passions foul obscured. Mine eye pursued him still, but under shade lost sight of him. One of the banished crew, I fear, hath ventured from the deep to raise new troubles. Him thy care must be to find. To whom the winged warrior thus returned. Uriel, no wonder if thy perfect sight amid the sun's bright circle where thou sittest see far and wide. In at this gate none, none pass the vigilance here placed, but such as come well known from heaven. And since meridian hour no creature thence, if spirit or other sort so minded have or leaped these earth, earthy bounds on purpose, hard thou knowest to it to exclude spiritual substance with corporeal bar. But if within the circuit of these walks, in whatsoever shape he lurk, of whom thou tellest by morning, by morrow dawning, I shall know. So promised he, and Uriel to his charge returned on that bright beam, whose point now raised bore him slope downward to the sun now fallen beneath the Azores. Whether the prime orb, incredible how swift, had thither rolled diurnal, or this less voluble earth by shorter flight to the east had left him there arraying with reflected purple and gold the clouds that on his western throne attend. Now came still evening on, and twilight gray had in her sober livery all things clad. Silence accompanied for beast and bird, they to their grassy couch, these to their nests were slunk, all but the wakeful nightingale. She all night long her amorous descant sung. Silence was pleased, 
now glowed the firmament with living sapphires. Hesperus that led the starry host rode brightest till the moon rising in clouded majesty at length the parent queen unveiled her peerless light and o'er the dark her silver mantle threw. When Adam thus to Eve, fair consort, the hour of night and all things now retired to rest, mind us of like repose, since God hath set labor and rest as day and night to men successive, and the timely dew of sleep now falling with sleep slumberous weight inclines our eyelids. Other creatures all day long rove idle unemployed and less need rest. Man hath his daily work of body or mind appointed, which declares his dignity and the regard of heaven on all his ways, while other animals unactive range and of their doings God takes no account. Tomorrow, ere, fre ere fresh morning streak the east with first approach of light, we must be risen and at our pleasant labor to reform yon flowery arbors, yonder alleys green, our walk at noon with branches overgrown that mock our scant manuring, manuring and require more hands than ours to lop their wanton growth. Those blossoms also, and those dropping gums that lie bestrown unsightly and unsmooth, ask riddance if we mean to tread with ease. Meanwhile, as nature wills, night bids us rest. To whom thus Eve with perfect beauty adorned, my author and disposer, what thou biddest unargued I obey. So God ordains, God is thy law, thou mine. To know no more is woman's happiest knowledge and her praise. With thee conversing, I forget all time, all seasons and their change, all please alike. Sweet is the breath of morn, her rising sweet, with charm of earliest birds. Pleasant the sun, when first on this delightful land he spreads his orient beams, on herb, tree, fruit, and flower blistering with dew, fragrant the fertile earth after soft showers, and sweet the coming on of grateful evening mild. Then silent night with this her solemn bird and this fair moon, and these the gems of heaven, her starry train. But neither breath of morn when she ascends with charm of earliest birds, nor rising sun on this delightful land, nor herb, fruit, flower, blistering with dew, nor fragrant fragrance after showers, nor grateful evening mild, nor silent night with this her solemn bird, nor walk by moon, nor glittering starlight without thee is sweet. But wherefore all night long shine these? For whom this glorious sight when sleep hath shut eyes? To whom our general ancestor replied, daughter of God and man, accomplished Eve, those have their course to finish round the earth by morrow evening, and from land to land in order, though to nations yet unborn, ministering light prepared, they set and rise, lest total darkness should by night regain her old possession and extinguish life in nature and all things, which these soft fires not only enlighten, but with kindly heat of various influence, foment and warm, temper or nourish, or in part shed down their stellar virtue on all kinds that grow on earth, made hereby after to receive perfection from the sun's more potent ray. These then, though unbeheld in deep of night, shine not in vain, nor think, though men were none, that heaven would want spectators, God want praise. Millions of spiritual creatures walk the earth unseen, both when we wake and when we sleep. All these with ceaseless praise his works behold, both day and night. How often from the steep of echo, or, how often from the steep of echoing hill or thicket have we heard celestial voices to the midnight air, soul or responsive each to others note, singing their great creator. Oft in bands while they keep watch, or nightly rounding walk with heavenly touch of instrumental sounds in full harmonic number join, their songs divide the night and lift our thoughts to heaven. All right, we will leave Adam and Eve in the middle of all of this odd pillow talk about, I don't know, astronomy, 
voices in the night. Yeah, anyway, even her curiosity, a little bit of foreshadowing, I think. All right, hope your day was lovely and I will see you tomorrow.